with us. Our opening song this morning is number 137 in your missalette, 137 in the missalette, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees of the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of the fruit and ate it, and she also gave some of it to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together 
and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of your compassion wipe out my offense thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me be merciful Lord for we have sinned For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out, from your presence and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation. And a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men inasmuch as all sinned. For if by the transgression of the one death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the just faith and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. In conclusion, just as through one transgression condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you might proclaim his gospel. 
worthily and well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with with your your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached him, approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At at this, Jesus said, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Some beautiful weather. Were you able to receive ashes this past Wednesday as a reminder that each of us will die? Whether you're young or old or middle age, each of us should prepare for a holy death when we will meet our loving and merciful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thinking about today's gospel where Jesus spent 40 days and nights in the desert. Have you been to the desert yet? I don't don't see any heads shaking. If not, what is it going to take to get you there? Each of us, really the whole world, needs to get to the desert to refresh our souls so Christ can be more present in everything we do. Will you take a trip with me to the desert? Lean back, get a little bit comfortable, close your eyes for a moment, and imagine. Imagine you've just come home on a Friday night, reflecting that it's been a very long week. Worked hard, studied hard. You're tired, but you decide to sift through this week's unread mail. There's a decoratively colored letter sticking out from the bottom of that stack of mail that you decide to open first. There's no return address on it, so you're a little curious who it's from. Are your eyes still closed? Inside, you find an attractive card with the words, You're Invited, written in cursive on the front. There are only two words inside the card, 
Please come, along with the bus ticket. Now you begin to think, who could have sent this? Is it an invitation to someone's birthday party or anniversary? You carefully examine the bus ticket, where on the end of the ticket it clearly notes it's a round-trip ticket. There is no destination on it, only a bus number, and that it leaves from the station just around the corner from your house at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. More tired now, you push the letter and the ticket aside and go to bed for the evening. You don't sleep well that evening thinking about who could have sent that card. Waking early about 6 o'clock, you're still thinking about that bus ticket. So much so, you decide to get dressed and walk down to that bus station and check it out. There you find lots of people roaming around, looking a little bit lost, but holding what looks like the same ticket you have. So you ask, where does this ticket take you? All who you ask respond about the same. We're not sure, but we've heard it's a place where when you come back from it, you're full of joy. Getting on the bus now and settling in the first seat behind the driver next to the window. You start to feel the bus pull away from its parking spot. You hear the roar of the bus engine revving up and slowing down as it as the driver manipulates on the side roads prior to getting onto the freeway. The now moderate roar of the engine is more constant now, and feeling the warmth of the seat, you fall asleep. Time passes. Waking up, you discover where once the bus was full of passengers, now you are the only one left. The freeway is gone, and the bus is setting literally on flat land in the middle of nowhere. A desert, if you will. There are no roads, no buildings, no people. Only you and the driver who stops, opens the door, and tells you he'll be back to take you home whenever you're ready. But what does whenever you're ready mean? And what are you supposed to do here? You can open your eyes now, but remember the setting, and let's review the purpose of Lent and our gospel to find out what we can do while we are here in this desert place. Maybe we can make some, some notes to ourselves as we go along. Every day, but especially during Lent, each of us is sent an invitation to a time and place where we can examine the physical and spiritual lives that we've been living, and then use this examination to help us prepare for transforming the rest of our lives to get closer to Christ. This is the purpose of Lent. This place or location we do this in may be a real desert or wasteland in the middle of nowhere, but it could also be any place where we can spend some time alone and where we can raise our hearts and minds to God in prayer and conversation. Maybe that place is an empty park bench early in the morning. Maybe it's a retreat center, the Adoration Chapel, or even in a car on a long trip you take by yourself with the radio off. Our Gospel tells us how Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. And after 40 days of fasting there, he was hungry. The devil challenged him to turn stones into bread so he could satisfy that hunger. Jesus responded to the devil, quoting the words of Moses from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 3, One does not live on bread alone, but on but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. These were the words originally spoken by Moses as he laid down the laws of God to the nation of Israel for how they should live if they wanted to increase in number 
and enter and possess the land that was promised to them, the promised land. And he called them to remember how God led them through the wilderness for 40 years to test their hearts and their willingness to follow God's laws. How many of us think that a successful life is based on how well we're able to satisfy our appetites, not just for food, but for other material things too, for money, to be the best dressed, to drive the coolest car, enjoy the most luxurious vacation, or play or watch the most desired sports events, and so on and so on, all in the highest of styles. What, is, what Jesus is telling us is, and what Moses told his people earlier, was that the physical things we often want are not what really satisfy our deepest desires. What truly satisfies us and which builds for us the best life is our total commitment to God and living every word that comes from him. We should pray for God's wisdom and then the courage to always follow his teachings. Note to self, one thing I can do in my desert is to examine if I have my priorities straight. Do I value material things more than I value my relationship with Jesus? If I have put material things before God, am I truly sorry for this? I decide here and now, I will change what I value most in life. And I will joyfully share what I have with others while being a good steward of God's creation. This makes me happy and joyful. Next, the devil takes Jesus to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and challenges Jesus' power to throw himself down and have the angels catch him. But Jesus responds with another quote from Deuteronomy, this time from 616, he says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Do we sometimes say to God, if you do this for me, then I'll do that for you? Or God, if you get me that job or the other new whatever it is that I want, I'll know then that you're real and that you really do love me. Or do we say, my Lord and my God, let your will, not mine, be done. Jesus wants us to live by faith, knowing that he loves us immeasurably and only wants what is best for us, whatever that is. He gives us a free will to make choices to live our lives based on his teachings. Note to self. Another thing I can do in my desert is ask, have I been faithful to God in following his words? Or have I questioned his power, knowledge, and authority? Especially in times when I'm tired, I'm angry, I'm hungry, or feeling disappointed. Have, ever, have I ever seemed to forget the fact that God will never abandon me? In his kingdom, the one that I desire to go home to is not of this world. I pledge to make better choices to be faithful to God's, God's instructions for me and how I am to live. And I feel happy knowing I'll be making better choices. Finally, the devil takes Jesus to a very high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and tells him, he can have all these things if he'll just bow down and worship him, the devil. Jesus again gives his response from words spoken through Moses in Deuteronomy. 6.13, he says, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. The devil is always present to entice us to want more. More power over people and things more material things, and to be more prideful and boastful of what, we, of what we have and the control we might have over others. 
Note to self, when were the times when I chose to pursue, to pursue pleasures the devil wanted me to for the wrong reasons? Who did I hurt when I pursued my selfish self-interest? When the devil asked me again to seek things that God would not want for me, I will refuse and instead ask what Jesus would want me to do. This also brings me joy, knowing that I have the strength of God supporting me to do his will, not the devil's. And now, it's time to go home. Blinking your eyes for just a moment, our bus is back. You climb aboard to a bus full of happy and joyful cheers from those who you began your trip with. Everyone seems transformed. And now that you've been to the desert, can you help someone else get there too and find joy? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now turn to God with our prayers, trusting that he will hear and answer us. For Pope Francis, for his health and safety and his intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Holy Spirit will help us to recognize our dependence upon God and free us from our pride, which seeks to convince us that we can save ourselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will touch the hearts of the alienated from the church and reconnect them with the community of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the lonely, the discouraged, the emotionally disturbed, and all who need our prayers this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those recovering from natural disasters, especially in Turkey and Syria, that they may receive the help they need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all victims of gun violence, that God will hear, heal their physical and emotional wounds, and inspire leaders with new ways to end violence in our world and on our streets, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of the living and for those who have died, especially for Martha Tennell, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their hearts so that whatever we dare to ask in fitting prayer, we may receive by your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offer to a song this morning is number 406 in the music issue. 406 in the music issue, Open My Eyes.
Open my heart, Lord. Help me to love like you. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to Deep in your heart, oh love, I live within you. Thank you. Rest now in me. Bless the Open my eyes, Lord. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it'll become. Help me to see your. We receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work Help of the Lord. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. There you go. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another the sign of peace. Peace, Deacon. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be. By of grace can you save for eternal life. Body 
of Amen. Christ. The body of 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 Christ. of Christ, the body 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 of Christ, may God bless you. The body, body of, Christ. of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May God bless you. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. You. The body of Christ. Satisfy the body, the body of Christ with gifts the body of the finest wheat. The body Come of Christ. give to us, O saving Lord, the bread the body of, Christ. of life to eat. The body of Christ. As when the shepherd the body of calls his sheep. They the body of know Christ. and heed his voice. The body of Christ. So when you call the body of your family, Lord, we follow and the body rejoice. Of Christ. The body of Christ. You satisfy the hunger. The body of Christ. With the body of Christ. The finest the body of Christ. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the body of Christ. Of life to the body of Christ. The body of Christ. We sing the body of Christ. Our praise and gratitude. The body of Christ. You should count us worthy the body of Christ. to share this the body of Christ. Food. The body of you Christ. Satisfy the heart. The body of Christ. With the body of Christ. The finest wheat. Come give to us, O Savior. The body of Christ. of life to eat. The body of Christ. Is not the cup the body of we bless and share. The body of Christ. Of Christ outpoured. The body of Christ. Do not one cup, one the body of declare. Our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with it a finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart. Oh, saving Lord, the 
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You, you may have noticed the purple crosses up here. If you weren't here on Wednesday, you may not know what those are. But we had people write down what they were going to do for Lent and then hang it on the tree. There are extra crosses if you want to in, in, be included in that. So that's, that's what that's all about. Also, the new March newsletter or by the doors, you can pick those up as you leave. And also, there's black books and rice bowls. Those are things that will help you to make a good Lent by helping you pray and giving alms. Um, also, there is no youth group tonight. Father and I both have to be somewhere else. We haven't learned how to bilocate yet. <laughs> And also, uh, there is a St. Vincent de Paul meeting tomorrow evening at 6.30 in St. Vincent Hall. And all are welcome. You can come and see what's happening to help the needy in Shelby County. I think that's it. Oh, there's a... Vision. A vision. There is a... Vi sorry. There's a vision meeting tonight, uh, today, right after Mass in the Hall. So if you want to know or make plans for the future, you can join that. He's I have donuts. a vision. He brought donuts. <laughs> uh, two things on my little account. Uh, several people have asked already. Sundays in Lent. Do you got to do your penance on Sunday? Yes or no, Father? And the answer is, hmm. Hmm. Uh, because here's the two sides of it. Number one, there's 40 days in Lent. If you count the Sundays, there's 46 days. And because there's six Sundays. And then there's also the, the whole thing about like every Sunday we celebrate the resurrection. So it's kind of like a mini Easter. So some people say, well, you can excuse your penances on Sunday because technically that's not really a part of Lent. However, it's the first Sunday of Lent. Next Sunday is the second Sunday of Lent. 
So I say we should do our penances all Lent. All Lent, including Sundays. But if you should fall on a Sunday, you should feel a little less guilt um, than if you were to fall on a Monday. Okay? Number two is that you know the Batesville Deanery in which we are is uh, six counties. And there are 19 parishes in the six counties. And um, we have been asked as a deanery, all deaneries are supposed to have these Eucharistic celebrations um, for Euchar- part, as part of their Eucharistic revival. And so what we're doing in the Batesville Deanery is that each week, each county is taking a turn hosting a, an ador- 24 hours of adoration in one of the county's churches, and then also having a little bit of witness and a little prayer service at the end of that. So what does that look like here is that on Wednesday at 7 p.m. until Thursday at 7 p.m., we will have adoration in the church at St. Joe. We are asking that, that everybody come for, even if it's five minutes, it's a good thing to go to the desert, like Deacon is talking about, a good opportunity to do just that. We're doing it in the church so that people can come and just spend time with Jesus. Even if you can only manage five minutes, which you can manage for, but like just to go spend time with our blessed Lord in the desert is huge. To be in the presence of Jesus changes everything. And so I just would ask everybody to pop in for even a little bit uh, between 7 p.m. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Thursday. Now on 7 p.m. Thursday, at 6.30 p.m. Thursday, we will have a half hour prayer service to close out the 24 hours. And we will have a few witnesses of what Eucharistic adoration has done for people and how it has changed their life, how they have received miracles there. I will give a witness also, and we will have two other short ones. It will be a half hour, including benediction, and then uh, we will go our way. And adoration will go back to the, ch- the chapel. Um, so more. Of, there's a whole page in the bulletin about it. I just wanted to make a plea that everybody come, at least for a short bit, to be with our blessed Lord. The Lord be with you. Your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 528 in the music issue, Christ in Me Arise. Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise and I shall rise with you. Be now my vision, open these eyes, showing me all that I must see. Onward to the kingdom, you are the way, arise in me and I shall.